Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Corner. It's that time of day again. It's time for Andy's HVAC Tech Tips of the Day. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about fault codes on your furnace. Uh, you know, we get phone calls all the time. People say, you know, my furnace is flashing this many numbers. What does that mean? Well, first, I mean, the honest answer is it can mean all kinds of different things. Basically, it means that there's something wrong, uh, which I think you probably already know that something's wrong, but that's really all in all, that's what it means. That way a service technician can get out there and say, okay, well, this many flash codes means this, so we need to start with that and move on from there. It helps or aids in uh, diagnostics. So it is not necessarily a cure-all that, well, okay, well, it's flashing this many times, well, you replace this part and this is what it is. Sometimes we get lucky and other times maybe not so much. So I do also want to put out there that any of the fault codes that I talk about today does not necessarily mean that that's the same fault codes that your furnace has. I recommend everyone, if you are looking at fault codes or something like that on a furnace, find the manual uh, for that particular furnace, for that brand and model, and see what that fault code means for that furnace. Because um, there are a lot of different brands out there. There's all different kinds of styles. There's different boards, um, makes, models, all that kind of stuff. So just because what I say one is doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is for yours. But I wanted to go over kind of some of the basics. Uh, there's uh, the first four or five uh, flash codes that we get on some of the older furnaces are pretty common. And it's things that we see a lot. Uh, some of the new furnaces uh, are getting a little fancier. They've got that little LCD um, display on there, and it'll read like E5 or E7 or F4, you know, pick a number, whatever it is. Um, those get a little more descriptive and in-depth with some of the modern furnaces. Uh, so the, the fault codes I'm talking about here are more the, the simpler ones, uh, where you've just got a red blinking light or a green blinking light, whatever it is. But always, whenever you're looking at fault codes, look at your manufacturer specs on what they say those codes mean. Uh, but as far as fault codes, you know, if your furnace quits, usually you're going to know it, especially in the winter time. It gets cold in the house pretty quick, and then everybody's uncomfortable, everybody's yelling and unhappy and all that kind of stuff. So first thing, if you're a service tech coming in to a call, uh, always look for fault codes first. I tell everybody, look at the fault codes first, because so many of the furnaces out there, when you disconnect power to it, and you put power back again, those fault codes go away. Hell, the furnace may take off and run and do just fine that first cycle. And then we can usually find what the problem is, but it's a lot more work because you don't know where to start. So always look at that fault code first. If the furnace, which most of them have door switches in them, uh, so that when you take that door off, it kills power to it. So always look and see if there's a sight glass. There's a little bitty hole about that big around uh, in the uh, door of the furnace. Usually the blower or the boards are typically in the blower compartment on most modern furnaces. Always look in there with the lights out or whatever you got to do so you can see that little red flashing light. Uh, there are a few manufacturers out there that they either put the sight glass in the wrong spot or there's no sight glass at all. So you can't see anything. So in my opinion, it's a little pointless because you pull the door off, kills the power, does away with your code, all that kind of stuff. Either way, do whatever you can to see what that fault code is before you shut the furnace down. Now, obviously, don't stick your fingers in where there's any kind of power or anything like that. That's my electricity uh, disclaimer for the day. Uh, you know, people do weird things sometimes, so be careful. Uh, furnaces can't hurt you. But my point is, make sure you always look for that fault code. Um, the other thing is, a lot of modern furnaces, uh, we do have a recall button on there to where if you disconnect the, you know, say the homeowner started the furnace for you, uh, and everything's back to work and you want to know what it did uh, most or a lot of those you can disconnect the call for heat and hit that little recall button and it will flash the last five or last 10 fault codes that were stored in that board so uh, they have made it a little bit easier on us to where we can get back to those um, instead of you know just losing them forever and then having to start all over so whatever you can do find out what that fault code is and then go through from there so number one flash code or actually, let's start with a uh, solid on light um, a lot because people look in there. Homeowners look in there a lot and they see a solid green light or a solid red light and say there's something wrong. It's got a red light in there. No, they just like to make the lights red for some reason. I know that sounds like an alarming thing, but they only put so many lights on there. So it's red. Usually on most furnaces, a solid red light means normal operation. No call for heat. Most furnaces, not all, but most. So if you just have a steady red light on there, furnace is running, heating like it's supposed to, everything's probably okay. Uh, a number one flash code. In most furnaces, uh, usually that's an ignition failure or it attempted too many times and it has locked out. 
Uh, one flash code is typically a lockout code. Either um, it's tried several times to light, you know, it's gone through its sequence of either three or five times trying. Uh, maybe you got a, a igniter failure. Maybe you have uh, dirty burners and it can't get the burners lit when it's supposed to, or you know, something along those lines where we have an ignition failure. It didn't light for some reason. Um, you know, that's always an option. Even if uh, there another one would be a dirty flame sensor. Uh, if your flame sensor can't read for some reason, it, say it did light. Uh, but all three times that it tried, it couldn't sense the flame, so it shut it back down. It's tried three, three to five times now, and so it locks itself out. So number one is a lock, lockout code. Number two on most furnaces is usually the pressure switch contacts are stuck closed. So if for whatever reason, if there's something wrong with that switch, uh, and it does not open after the last call for heat, whenever that inducer stops, the contacts should open. The board recognizes that uh, everything's... Uh, open like it's supposed to be upon starting. Uh, if that doesn't happen, then you get a number two flash code. So usually it has something to do with the pressure switch uh, contact sticking. Uh, the pressure switch needs to be replaced or you need to check your wiring and your pressure switch circuit. Make sure there's not something else in that circuit or make sure there's not something wrong with the wiring, something like that. So usually that's a, that's a stuck pressure switch fault code. Um, it, and a uh, side note, if a pressure switch or really any switch, if it does stick and uh, you know you do get it working again all of a sudden, go ahead and replace that switch. If it's stuck once, it's gonna stick again. You don't wanna have to do the trouble all over again and have a cold house and all that kind of stuff. So if you got a problem with it, just replace it. Don't try to uh, you know get it by. A lot of those switches are pretty cheap or in comparison, they're not that bad. So uh, number three fault code would be, uh, usually pressure switch did not close with inducer running. So you know, your furnace starts up, it goes through its normal sequence of operation. Uh, which I'm going to do another video out there about what your sequence of operation should be. Um, but uh, the inducer starts, it should close that switch. If it cannot close that switch, either there's something wrong with the contacts in that switch, or it is not drawing enough of a vacuum to be able to pull that switch closed, because those little pressure switches have a diaphragm inside there. Uh, if it cannot pull itself closed and pass voltage through it like it's supposed to, um, then it, you will get a uh, number three fault code. Uh, this will also disable the furnace and keep it from running because they, uh, the purpose of it is of that pressure switch is to prove that that inducer is running. Because uh, if the inducer is not running, we don't want the furnace taking off and lighting because the inducer has to help draw the flue gases and the flame and everything else through that heat exchanger and get all the flue gases out the pipe. And so everybody's safe and happy and warm and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it, it's safety, it, it is a safety switch to prove that that inducer is running. So even if your inducer comes on, but there's something in the pipe, something wrong with the switch, whatever. If that switch doesn't close, it's not going to let the furnace fire. That's a good thing. Uh, so then we know there is a problem. So at that point, you can replace the switch, find out what's blocking the flue, um, you know, replace an inducer, whatever needs to happen. There's a lot of different options there. So uh, that's a number three fault code on most, not all, but most furnaces. Uh, and then we've got number four, uh, which a number four is usually open limit uh, circuit. Uh, which that could be your primary limit, or a lot of us call it a main limit, uh, you know, the main temperature limit in that furnace. Uh, some units do have like flame rollout tied into the same circuit, or there's auxiliary blower limits, something like that. Basically, it means the furnace has gotten too hot for some reason in most cases. Um, either you have somebody left a filter in there and it's dirty, uh, change it, reset it, and try it out. Uh, we need to be checking gas pressure, temp rise, um, static pressure, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it could be a dirty filter, could be a um, dirty blower, dirty uh, evaporator coil, not moving enough air across the heat exchanger, um, could be um, poor ductwork where the static pressure is really high, furnace is overheating once it runs a little while, something like that. Either way, we need to find out why it's overheating. Don't just reset it and let it just keep going on about its day. Find out why, which that is the, the biggest thing with all these things, all the safety switches, really anything we do in the heat and air industry. If there's a problem, we need to know why. You know, I see way too many times uh, people come in and they say, well, they reset it and took off running. Everything's good. You'll be fine. No, you won't be fine. If it's quit once, it's going to quit again. Things don't happen in just like flukes or um, somebody pulled up next to me. They probably think I'm an idiot sitting here talking to myself. But I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to you. But so many times people, you know, reset it. And, you know, like I said, if it quit once, it's going to quit again. 
and we need to solve the problem. We need to figure out what happened, why, and what it is going to take to fix it. So uh, if it's overheated, do not leave a furnace that has been overheating because, or like a flame rollout switch that's been tripping. Find out why. Don't let it do it again. It could potentially be dangerous. And we don't want those nuisance calls for the homeowner to have to keep resetting their furnace or something like that. I recommend not showing homeowners how to reset a flame rollout switch just for the fact that we don't want them in there pushing that button over and over and resetting it every time the flames roll out. And by the time you get there, two months later, the inside of the furnace looks like a charred piece of um, charcoal and where they've just burnt everything up. That's dangerous. We have potential of hurting somebody, hurting the building, hurting the house, the furnace, whatever find out what was wrong. So either way, that's my story on um, fault, fault codes. Um, I know I only did four. There are a lot more out there. With a lot of the furnaces out there, once you get past number four, number five, um, a lot of times they vary on depending on what brand or unit you have. You know, a lot of them, you know, seven flashes is a um, flame, poor flame signal. Uh, a lot of times eight flashes is a reverse polarity or a power problem, or uh, I've seen some, I think number six, a lot of times is an open igniter circuit. Uh, there's one for a blown fuse. Either way, there's a lot of different variances in there with the different um, furnaces out there. The biggest thing I wanted to get across today was how to find those fault codes and how to read them and see what some of the basics are. Because uh, it is so important that whenever you are looking at those fault codes and trying to figure out what's wrong with it, always go to your manufacturer's book or their specs, whatever it is, and find out what that fault code means for that furnace. Because again, I want to make sure I get that disclaimer out there. Any of the fault codes that I said here today may not necessarily be the ones on your furnace. So uh, Google's a great thing these days. You can find a lot of stuff on your model with your model number um, and that kind of thing. So just make sure you're looking at the right thing. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever it may be, uh, leave, as always, leave them in the comment box below. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share as much as possible. Share it to a friend. That way they, everybody can see the videos, that kind of thing. Just get it out there. Um, so if you have anything, like I said, leave in the comments. Thank you and God bless.